some review. Uh, remember when we had a number like this, 6.32 times 10 to the 7th. Well, how do I write this in standard notation? Remember? What? Move the decimal over seven places. Yeah, which way? Uh, left to the right. right. To the right? Right. And you know this trick? Yeah. Left. So one, two, uh-oh, we ran out of digits. What do we do? Uh, zero. So how many zeros? Uh, it's five. Yep, because we've already gone two, we need to go five more. One, two, three, four, five. So six, three, two, zero, 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 zero. Put the commas in, okay. So this is the same number. So this is a, easy to do. We just go that many spaces, right? Um, but going backwards is really the key to this. So you need to be able to look at this number and tell me how to write it in scientific notation. Okay? So remember, what's the first thing you do? You put a decimal after the first non-zero digit like that, right? Yep. And then you have to multiply by a power of 10. That will return it to there. And that's we already know the answer, but... Seven places to the right will return it to where it is there. Okay, so now let's do the same thing with uh, small numbers. Well, first of all, in between big numbers and small numbers is a zero or six point. What if it was 6.32 times 10 to the zero? What does that equal in scientific notation in standard notation? Mm. Yeah. That number. Nope. So that would be 632 would be 6.32 times 10 to the second because you're moving it over two places. What is it? Me? You don't move the number at all. Yeah, it's just 6.32. You move it zero places to the right. So guess what 10 to the zero equals? What do you multiply by something to keep it the same? You. One. It's not zero. This equals one. If you multiply by zero, what do you get? Zero. If you multiply it by one, it stays the same. So 10 to the zero actually equals one. And it kind of makes sense because remember 10 to the seventh is a 10 with seven zeros in it, right? So 10 is a 10 with 10 to the zero is 10 with zero zeros in it. Well, if you take the only zero away from 10, what are you left with? One. Okay. Now, so that makes sense. You don't go at all. What if you had negative numbers? So if I had 6.32 times 10 to the negative third, guess which direction you go, Adeline? Left. Yeah, you're going to go left three places. One. Uh-oh, you're out of digits. Zero. Add some zeros. So you end up with... 0 0.00632. So far, so good. So these negative exponents have nothing to do with positive or negative numbers. Like that's not what you do. They just make the number smaller. Okay. So you got to be able to take a number like this and go backwards. So we can still apply the same rules. First step is put the decimal after the first non-zero digit. What's the first non-zero digit? Six, so put it after the six, and then you have to multiply it by a power of 10 that will move it left three places, right? So you have to move it back to where it starts. So times 10 left three places. So that negative sign is not, doesn't mean the number is gonna be negative. It means that the direction of which what direction you move the decimal. So remember plotting points on a graph? What does negative three comma something mean? It means go left three. So it's the same thing with exponents of a power of a power of 10. Okay, um, let's do a couple more examples and then that'll be it for 57. So I wanna write this in standard notation. Do this on your paper. 
4.63 times 10 to the negative 8. So do that on your paper. If you show me your answer and you get it right, I'll give you a flak attack coupon. Can I just tell you or do I have to have anything? Paper. Paper. I'm going to do it up in the corner of the place. Okay. Oh, I'm Yep, that's it. So I'm going to give you two flak attack points since Done. you're the first one who got it. Done. Done. Then I'll Done. give others. Well, you were, you were not done before Marin. Yeah. Like that. They moved it over eight places. Yep, perfect. Ooh, yeah. Done. Yep. Yep. Finish? Uh, not quite. What, what's, what did you do wrong? So you went the wrong direction and you made it negative. Don't make it negative. You have to go to the left. Can you do it? It's all right. You're just in school. Okay, so. Um, Avery, did you do it? Okay, um, so who got it? Grace got it. I got it. Um, all right. Um, seven, no, it's a gator. Oh. <laughs> a gator. Okay. All right. Um, so, guys, we're just moving the decimal left eight places. So when you multiply by a power of 10, you move it this many places to the right, okay? So how do you move negative eight to the right? You go left eight, right? So this is gonna be... That doesn't make sense. How do well, you if move I go negative left, eight to the right? Yep, yeah, if I go right, negative eight, I'm gonna go... Something like that. You don't have to make those noises if you don't want to. But. Okay, so if I start here, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If it's written in, in, in scientific notation, there's only going to be one digit there, right? So how many zeros are you going to end up with? One less than that all the time. If you're going from true scientific notation, which is just one non-zero digit, to standard notation, you're going you're gonna to add seven zeros to the on the front side of that okay does that make sense because one place is going to take care of that non-zero digit then you have to go seven more places so you need seven more zeros okay now let's go backwards uh, so this one will be for another flag attack coupon first one to get it um it will get two um and then Everyone else who gets it will get one. Wait, we have to do it to normal yep. notation? No, stay on to scientific notation. So how do you write that in scientific notation? Oh. 
But you put 0. 0.33 oh my instead of 3.3. What'd you get? Okay. Uh, I never get things like that right. So you don't need negative. So you only negate the x. Uh, but it's going to be, it's going to be 3.3. .3. Okay. So the first step is to write the, write it after the first non-zero digit, right? So now we have to figure out how many places to move it. So we're going to go left. So you got to have a negative. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative six. Yep. Big. It's a big difference. If you don't have a negative sign, you know what it is? A big number. 3,300,000. <laughs> That's a little bit bigger than this really small number. Okay, so do you guys understand the process? Mm -hmm. All right, that's it for 57. Let's move on to 58. Avery, did you get it? All right, I think she just turned on the Zoom call and then was playing video games or something. All right, so I'm who's not that? playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you, you're welcome to participate in these two and get flak attack points, okay? Did you get 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 6? Yeah, I did. All right, I'm going to give you a flak attack point. Good job. Thank you. Uh, you can play video games as long as you can pay attention, too. I would be playing video games, honestly. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So Avery, you're up to 137. That's yeah. quite a lot of points there. You got me. And you got two points, Adeline. Plus an extra one at the beginning. First yeah, I got I got that one for you. Okay. All right, let's move on to 58. All right, um, let's see here. Okay, this is kind of fun. We're doing, uh, a, I guess this is considered geometry, but it's basically some shape stuff. So we're gonna talk about the line of symmetry. Have you guys heard um, the, the expression um, that's very symmetrical. What does that mean? Uh, Kiara, what does it mean? Isn't it like it wants something like it looks like another thing and they're like close together? Um, kind of. Anyone else? No. Yeah. It's where there's a line straight through the middle or something that both sides are like mirroring. Yeah, together. so they the two things look together, but it's on the same thing. So like my face minus a mole or freckle is pretty symmetrical. All of you guys are symmetrical, okay? The outside of our faces, the outside of our bodies are usually symmetrical. The inside of our bodies is where everything gets really messy, right? Like you got your liver on one side and your pancreas. I don't know anything about that stuff, but I used to. But for the most part, we're pretty symmetrical people, right? Because the left side usually looks like the right side. Uh, and things like that, okay, so symmetrical. So there's a line, which is kind of like the mirror. So the line says, okay, everything on this side of the line looks is the mirror image of everything on this side. So for example, if I drew a triangle like this, can you guys tell me the line of symmetry, Adeline? It starts at the point and goes straight down. Yep, so right here is the line of symmetry, okay? Now, technically, I could look at this. Look at this. 
you see how this part of the triangle is the same as that part of the triangle? And then there's one more. The so this one has three lines of symmetry, okay? Now that only, it's only because this triangle is a nice equilateral or equal angular triangle, okay? So, but not all shapes are like that. What about this? How many lines of symmetry do you think I can draw in this shape? How many lines do you think? Do you know, Addy? Four. Okay, how would you draw them? Like from the corner. From the corner, okay. And then from the other corner. From the other corner, so let's do a different color. And then where else? Um, so that's two. Split in half. Yeah, and then split in half the other way. Yep, so there's one and there's one. So there's some good, good four lines of symmetry. That's awesome. All right, does this make sense? Yeah. Okay, now uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is what's called a function, which is funny because um, it has nothing to do with these lines of symmetry. It's just what Saxon does every once in a while. The line of sim lines of symmetry was an, a concept that was pretty short and easy. So let's just fit in another concept. That's what they're doing here. All right, so when I used to go to summer camp, um, I used to... Uh, uh, every at the end of the year, at the end of the week, um, each cabin like put on a skit. So that the group that was in my cabin, we had to put on a skit, and it would be a funny skit or whatever. And then they would perform. Then there would be a contest. You know, at the end of the week, whoever had the funniest skit or the best skit. Every year, one cabin group did this skit, and so it was like, oh, I call doing that skit so. So anyway, whoever, I don't know how they decided who did it, but um, it was called uh, the enlarging machine. So basically, um, there was a big box on the stage, okay? There's a big box, and it said enlarging machine on the box, okay? So what happened is, like, one guy would come out, and they would see the box and be, oh, an enlarging machine, that's weird. And the guy had like a toothpick in his mouth or something, and he throws it in the box. And then all of a sudden, the box spits out this big two by four, this piece of wood, right? This big two by four. Oh, wow, it works. So the guy just keeps going, whatever. Um, and then the next guy comes and reads this enlarging machine and says, oh, what's this? And he has like, uh, a penny in there and he puts the penny in and all pops a quarter and he moves on which he's a moron right because what do you do you put the quarter in you get 50 cents you put the 50 cents in, you get a dollar you stay there all right there's no limit on this enlarging machine but he just left i don't know why okay and then the third guy comes by and he said oh this looks stupid so you know what he does is he spits in the box. Uh -oh. So what happens? <laughs> so what he did, and this is what happens every year at this, this camp. Um, so the guy, there's a guy in the box. If you didn't figure it out already, there's a guy in the box. It's a big box. He has a bucket of water and he throws it and the guy who spits ducks and everybody in the front row gets wet. <laughs> it's a funny skit and everybody loves it. Everyone knows it's coming. So they get ready, they all want to be in the front or whatever. But anyway, this is a function. You put something in and then something else spits out, okay? So it depends on what the function does. So for example, if you double it, so if you put in a four, what spits out? An eight. So let's say the function is to multiply by two. What happens if you put in a five? 10. Sits out as a 10. What happens if you put in a, uh, a 7? 14. 14, okay. So each function has a function. So if you put something in, then it'll double it and spit it out. Yes. Kind of reminds me of the negatizer. Yes. Did I already show you the negatizer? Wait, what's that? Did 
Did Daniel show you that? Okay. What's yeah. that? Um, I might show you the negativizer video before you leave today, but um, it is horrifying. If you're animal conscious, you can imagine what the nuggetizer machine does. It nuggets oh. every animal you put in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but we'll talk about that later. I don't want to give you nightmares. Okay. So um, this is what a function does. So for example, let's see if you can figure out what this function does and then fill in the blanks, okay? Okay, so I want to figure out what the seven is going to do in this function. So let me show you what's happening. So what do you think that seven is going to do, Kiara? I think it's multiplying everything by five. Okay, so what's going to be in that blank? A big number. Let's see. Thirty-five. 35. Okay, so thirty-five. Good. So um, you have to figure out what the function does, all right? Don't say that too fast, okay? So this function is going to multiply everything by five. So seven times five is 35. So first step, figure out the function and then apply it to what's missing, okay? All right, you guys wanna try another one? Sure. All right, let's do... Uh, I think these are too easy. What do you think? You think they're too easy? Unless you make it hard, I think they're too easy. Okay. Zero, one, three, five. All right. It's too easy, isn't it? So do you, did you figure out what the function is doing? Yes. Grace, did you figure it out what the function is doing? Yeah, it's just adding by four. Mm -hmm. All right, so you just add it. This is not multiplying, so it could be in any operation. You're adding four, so what's our missing blank going to be? Six. Five. Five. Five, good. All right, pretty simple, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. That's all I got. How much well done. Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flash.